This is my favorite project of the Laser Academy seminars and apparently it is with the attendees also because we get three or four times as many emails and phone calls questioning this project than any other project that we carry out. It's a very interesting project and if it's not already obvious many industry suppliers provide a plaque now that can be turned into a picture frame by the owner of a laser engraver. Very often we would engrave a child's photograph. I think uh, maybe a good example would be a kindergarten graduation down here. Then use the tools of Corel Graphic Suite to cut that hole out, exposing then maybe a high school graduation, a college graduation, even a wedding, which makes it a high-end gift for uh, a grandmother. To be sure we're all on the same page, I'm going to turn off a few layers. By the way, it's not at all necessary to create it in different layers, but this will help me better illustrate what we're doing. I'm going to turn off the adult photograph. We're not really sending that to the laser. And then we'll turn off the blackboard simulation that I put in another layer. That's what we're going to send to the laser engraver when we get through with this project. So now let's get started. To begin with, on a project like this, or a product like this, I should say, I would always create a template. I mean by that, have most of the work already done. If I have this in three or four different sizes, I would like a template for each size. So I'm going to open up one of my templates, File and Open. And I'm going to open my 8 by 10 frame template. Notice CDT there instead of CDR. So when I click Open, about the only difference between a template and a drawing is that it comes up with this dialog and says you want to create new from template. The One of the big advantages to that is that I don't stand the chance of covering this up inadvertently by clicking on save and cover it up. So when I tell it new from template then it knows I'm starting a new document based on that template. Now let me explain the template. The gray rectangle with rounded corners is what I have measured in that particular 8 by 10 product. That's the part that's cut out behind. I ruined uh, several $12 plaques by not paying attention to that and didn't leave enough room. So when I cut it out, it didn't have room to hold the glass. So I made templates showing me that with which I have to work. The red then is actually what we're going to wind up cutting out. We could immediately send this to the laser and have that rectangle cut out for our picture frame. However, if we're going to do that, go down to store and buy a $2 picture frame. Instead, we want to put something inside that. So at that point, I'm going to run Corel Photo Paint to prepare a photograph with which we can work. So typically, I would go to the Corel Draw Launcher, Application Launcher, and run Corel Photo Paint. However, I already have it up in memory, so I'm going to Alt Tab to switch to Corel Photo Paint and now we're in Corel Photo Paint. I'm going to open up an image and we'll go down to our original photograph. Not necessary at all but it's my habit to get as look at that as big as I can so I maximize that and tell it to zoom to that maximized area. And then we're going to go to the, use the magic wand tool to mask out that background. And I've got a tolerance of 12 set up here. I think I'm going to lower that just a little. And then we'll start off in the regular mode, or normal mode, Corel Photo Paint calls it. And it's my habit to click in the upper left hand corner. And that's just about what I want. So I'm going to go to the additive mode now to select the rest of the back. Now while I'm in the normal mode, let me just illustrate. I'll click somewhere else. Notice it selects a different area but deselects the old area. Well, what I want to do is continue adding to the selection. So I'm going to go to the additive mode and then we'll work our way on around. So with just a few keystrokes, we have pretty well cleaned up 
that area. There's a few other areas there. If the magic wand ceases to be the best way to get that, we'll go instead to our brush mask tool. Uh, let's make a size of about 50. That's the size of our nib. That way we can just go in a much uh, more quickly clean up some of those areas. But now we have some areas we need to add back. So instead of the additive mode, we're going to go to the subtractive mode. And then we'll fill in this area right in here. And I see this should uh, also be filled in. It is my habit at this point to look at that in many different ways. So first I'm going to invert the mask, look at it on the outside. I see no problems there. So we'll put it back the way it was. Then I'm going to go to the mask overlay to look at it as an army of marching ants, as the industry calls it. Ah, notice there I have several problems that I did not see in the other mode. So to begin with, I'm going to go to mask outline and tell it to remove the holes. Notice that got rid of most of those. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong mode. I'm going to go to the additive mode now. Get rid of that. Here's a little blob up here. Now yeah, right there. I don't care for that. Let's see if there's any other thing. Now right here, we'd really like to go the other way. I see a little problem there that we'd like to get rid of on the inside. Now we'll flip that back and forth. Again, all this is not really necessary, but very often we can find some problem uh, by just flipping that on and off again. We see a couple of spots out here. So we'll clean that up. Wrong mode again. And we have that pretty clean. So we'll go back to our normal mask mode. And this is for, this is that with which we want to work. Therefore, we have mask off the rest of it. We'll edit and copy that. Now we'll switch back to Corel Draw. And over here, we'll edit and paste. So there we have our part. I'll zoom up on that to get a little bit of a view. And immediately I see one thing that I fail to do. The edges are really too rough. I'm going to delete that. We'll go right back to paint. That's one reason why I like to do it this way. We'll zoom up on a portion of that. We'll see that's really ragged. So then I'm going to go to the outline mask and smooth that. Maybe about uh, five pixels. Now, do you see how much nicer that looks? We'll go to the navigator and just take a look around. Notice I, let me do that again. Down here is the Corel Photo Paint and or Draw Navigator. I'm going to hold that down. I have a little rectangle which represents the viewing area. And as I slide that around in my navigator window, it's showing me all the areas up here. Actually, I do notice one little tiny problem over there. In this case, I'm going to ignore that because I really don't care about that. Other cases, I'd want to get rid of that. I'm zooming on around there and see how our mask looks. And that looks pretty good. So we'll zoom back out, zoom to fit. And then we'll select that, edit and copy. We'll Alt-Tab or switch to Corel Draw itself. Then we'll edit and paste. Now, that looks much better. You will notice that little speck out there. But again, we're going to ignore it in this case because we know where we're going with this. And then while we're looking at it in kind of a zoomed up mode, I'm going to go back to photo paint. And then I need to explain that we need to engrave the young lady herself. But then we need something we need a line to cut that out. We're going to use Photo Paint to fill that selected area with black. Notice I'm checking down here. If I don't have black, let's uh, intentionally put something else in there. Let's say that if, if I came to that point, now I have blue in here. Well, I want to fill that with black. So I'm going to grab black and drop that onto my fill 
color and then I can go to my fill can or the paint can fill tool we call it and click out here now that which is selected is totally black. Let's go to Edit and Copy. Let's go back to Corel Draw and we'll Edit and Paste. And now we have our black select selection on top of our other part and that's what we want to trace, but let me call your attention that that is still an RGB bitmap. That, will, that may cause a few little problems. It is my habit, therefore, instead of trying to trace that as a RGB or full color logo, let's convert, let's say convert that to a bitmap and make it black and white. Now, instead of a RGB bitmap, it is a monochrome bitmap. That will trace much easier. Anytime a bitmap is selected, the property bar changes in X3 to allow us to trace the bitmap. I want to click on Trace, and I think I just want to do a quick trace. So what we have done is created a new object on top of our monochrome bitmap. Notice what we have down here, a curve on layer 1. Uh, that sometimes will come in more often than not. It will come in as a group and we'll have to ungroup it. But this time it came in as a curve. And just to illustrate what's going on, I'm going to grab a corner of that and drag it over to the other side, holding the control key down just to get that out of the way momentarily. That wasn't completely necessary, but it will help me to better explain what happened. Corel Trace took this monochrome bitmap and traced it and created this part which is a curve, a vector based object. We no longer need this. I'm going to press delete to get rid of that. Now to illustrate what we have here, that's what Corel Trace or pardon me, Power Trace did. I'm going to click on no fill and maybe a red outline. Right click on red, that'll give us our outline and then let's drop that back in by holding a control key when I drag it out and holding a control key when I drag it back that constrains that to be 100 percent so there's no chance I could have damaged my outline by doing it that way. Now we'll zoom in on that and see what we have. We'll go to our zoom tool, go down quite a bit smaller and take a look at that. And just to allow us to see that a little better, I'm going to give that a fatter outline where we can check and see how that looks. Now in the CorelDRAW Navigator, I want to walk around there and see what you think about the quality of that trace. Pretty slick, isn't it? So we'll zoom back to our whole page. Now we're ready to position our graphic objects where we want them. So I'm going to drag a box around both the trace and the bitmap and we'll drag that down here where it would be appropriate. Drop it off and then the next step is not at all necessary but it'll be easier to show you what's going on. I'm trying to select the bitmap but instead I'm selecting the trace or the curve, I'm going to press the tab key. Ah, now I have the RGB. The tab key will cycle through all of the available objects, so I'm pressing it until I have the RGB. Now I'm going to just flip that out of the way. By holding the control key down, that precisely moved that over to the side. Then we'll select our curve created by Power Trace and we'll go to Arrange, Shaping, and we'll call up the Shaping Dialog, or Docker we call it. Notice I have the source. If this is on, then it will leave our original, but we have no use for that, so I'm going to turn that off and tell it to take that which is selected and trim that to which we point. That's what we wanted. Now we'll grab a hold of our bitmap, grab a hold of a handle holding the control key down and precisely position that back. Now we'll zoom up and see how the finished part 
looks. I'll go to the navigator and we'll walk around that and you'll see that we have a very nice tight red line around all of that. We'll zoom back out and the last step would be to prepare our photograph. It's now in color and we could engrave it just that way. We could convert it to grayscale and engrave it that way. But what I'd really like to do is convert that to a black and white since I don't have photograve. Uh, if, if I have photograve, I'll go a completely different direction. I'll run that, uh, convert, say, say that to a grayscale and run it through photograve. If I don't have photograve, we'll use the Corel tools to do as good as we can with it and in many cases will turn out really nice. But before I do that I'd really like to put a vignette on the bottom. Notice these corners on the bottom are really too sharp. I want to soften those up a little so I'll go to bitmaps, creative, and I'm afraid this is hanging clear off the screen on my uh, movie recorder here, but I'm going down to one called Vignette. So with the Vignette under the from the Creative Bitmap applications, we'll start off over here and we'll preview that way too much. So I'm going to reduce the fade quite a bit, maybe over here, and preview that. I like that. What I really wanted was just the bottom part here softened up, leaving the top where it was. So we'll OK that. Now we'll turn it to black and white. Bitmaps, mode, black and white, and instead of half tone, Normally we want Jarvis, Stuckey, or Floyd Steinberg. I'm going to go with Jarvis. We'll look at the most important part, of course, the face. And I'm just going to make that a little, knowing we're going to put this on wood, which has a lot of grain, which will interfere with our pattern, I'm going to uh, increase our contrast there a little. Right about there looks good to me, so we'll OK that and it does not look particularly good on the screen there but uh, that will turn out pretty good. We'll zoom up on just that part and you'll see it's pretty nice graphic there. So we'll zoom back out. Now we're ready to send that to your laser engraver. Project completed.